Lakes Oil is the oldest oil and gas company in Australia and we've explored all over the world. We've come home after all these years to Gippsland where the company originated in 1947 and we see a large potential untapped resource being tight gas onshore which has been never ever looked at or exploited in the past. The reason we're refracking Wombat 2 is to try and improve the frac that we put into the well end back in 2004. In 2004 we placed approximately 73,000 pounds of propent. With this frac we're aiming to get 180,000 pounds of propent placed away into the formation. Uh, this will hopefully increase the fracture length from about 86 feet out to well over 300 feet, which should then obviously hopefully multiply the amounts of gas that we get out of the, out of the well. What we're doing is using technology which we're taking from similar fields in the United States and we're applying that to Australian conditions. It's expensive, we've made some mistakes, but we believe that we have knowledge that nobody else in this country has, particularly in relation to the onshore Victorian area. The original frac sort of flowed back at about 680,000 cubic feet a day. We're hoping to get in excess of 1 million cubic feet a day with this frac, which we believe will prove the commerciality of this field. Wombat 2 is our most successful well to date in this field. The fracking is designed to try and increase the permeability or the, uh, the surface area of the rock which allows the gas to flow in from. And so when you originally drill the well, we have just an eight and a half inch hole with seven inch casing inside it, so the surface area is quite small. When we do the fracture, we actually perforate this casing and just sort of punch some small holes in it. And then we fracture out to approximately 300 feet all around the well bore. So that takes the surface area from a very small amount to potentially quite a large amount. The fractures are caused by pumping fluid down at very high rates and that fluid then cracks and fractures the rock out to that distance. The sand is then carried in by the gel and fills those fractures which then holds the fractures open so the, the tight rock around is able to flow into this much more permeable and porous sand which then provides a sort of pathway for the, the gas to flow back into the well bore. And the propent is carried into the formation inside a gel slurry. Uh, this gel thickens up and becomes quite viscous when it's mixed and pumped into the hole. It then once the sand's out there after a length of time, the gel breaks down and flows back as fluid, leaving the sand inside the fracture. This sand then holds the fracture open, allowing the gas, increasing the surface area and allowing the gas to flow back to the well bore at a hopefully increased rate. Tight gas, or gas from unconventional reservoirs, is relatively new in Australia. Although in the US it's been in process for some 15 or 20 years, Lake Soil is pioneering tight gas in this country. We are confident that we are sitting on a very large resource in Victoria, a new resource for Victoria. The trick is and has always been getting it out commercially. The technology improvement in the United States in the last four or five years has been unbelievable. The Americans see tight gas or gas from unconventional reservoirs as the way out of their energy crisis. Australia is blessed with a, with a large resource and we believe that in the Gippsland we have uh, a resource which is very substantial. This frack that we're now carrying out will, we believe, unlock the potential for producing tight gas in Victoria.